elders of Israel. Even though Israel had grown to a nation of millions, God had a 70 elders that he specifically chose in order to reveal his power. He did not meet with everyone, all millions, every time. He only met with the elders and with the priest and with Moses. But through them, he had a message given to the nation of Israel. And I also said half in the book of Ezekiel, when the glory left systematically in a, in a digressive manner from the temple. It again happened because Ezekiel saw 70 elders burning incense to foreign gods. So the destiny of a nation was on the, on the foundation of the 70 elders. Even the destruction of a nation was on the foundation platform of the 70 elders. That's how important the 70 elders were unto God. But I wanted to know, people of God, last week I remember saying, when God called the 70 elders to the mountain top, He said to them, you know, that He is going to minister to them. And the Bible says, they, the 70 elders had such fellowship with God that they ate, drank, and had fellowship with the living God of Israel. It was powerful. Yet, they survived because God did not kill them. Because according to those days, laws, God cannot be seen. But they were covered in favor by the mercy of God. And I said this, when God calls them, this is important. This is where I want to begin. And then I will continue into what God has given to me this day. You know, when God said, He was speaking to these 70 elders, He called them by nobles. Those are the words that, that, that's the word that's been used. The 70 nobles of Israel. Not because they were prince. Not because they were having some royal kind of a pedigree. The Hebrew word used there for nobles is a Hebrew word which means corner peg. The tent pin. Corner peg. That's the Hebrew word. What does it mean? It means this. That if there's a tent it is a corner peg that holds the tent intact. If the corner peg is removed or it's weak, the entire tent would collapse. And this is the responsibility that God sees with an elder. And I felt in my heart to make it more practical today. And let me say this. Many of you that are seated here today, I want to say it with no qualification. Many of you that are seated here today are people that God has appointed, chosen with a purpose of blessing and delivering and holding together people that are connected to you. Amen. It is in your relationship with God that some of the people that you're praying for will be set free. That's how important your call is. And when I look at this, precious people will be going to Philippines and other parts. Let me make this very clear. God is calling you as corner pegs that through you, a nation can be blessed. Amen. Thousands can be blessed. And when God sends me to Gujarat, He's sending me as another peg that through me, He can touch people over there. There'll be other ministers of the gospel as well. But I wanted to know years back, the Lord gave me a revelation. He told me through an example, a very practical example. He said, even though there is the power lines in Edmonton, there are huge power lines, but that does not mean that I'm going to get electricity in my house. Remember, even though there are power lines, that will not produce electricity in my place, in my house. What I need is a connecting wire that will connect to the power line and to my house. That, say, that, that same thing goes for water. Even though there is so much water that the government can provide, there need to be a connecting tap that will bring water into your house. And I heard the Lord told me very specifically that my people are called as a connecting wires. How many of you are happy that God has called you to, as a connecting wire to touch to tap into the power of God and bring that power to the needy. Amen. 
to the people that are broken, to people that have absolutely need of that power. God calls you as a connecting wire. But then the Lord told me, a connecting wire must be very strong. If a connecting wire has got a short circuit, the whole thing will collapse. And let me tell you something, if God has called you as a connecting wire, how many of you want to say, God, make me strong? Oh, you didn't hear that. Make me strong so that I can be a blessing to my family. I can be a blessing to people that are connected to me. How many of you want your life to be empowered as a connecting wire? If that's your desire, can you make it known in the house of the Lord? A connecting wire, even under duress, empowered by God. Amen. But many times we don't realize it. And today I want you, you to know how God wants to strengthen the connecting wires. Are you ready today? Now let me say this once again. How many of you really believe that God has called you to be a blessing to others? Amen. Amen. Oh, you can do better. Come on. How many of you believe that through you, families connected to you are going to be protected, healed, delivered, and set free by the power of God? You are the connecting wire. I mean, my job today is to strengthen the connecting wires. Now, let me come to a passage. So God found the 70 elders. They are elders, but still not effective. So what God does? In the book of Numbers, chapter 11, I want you to get, go there for a moment. Numbers, chapter 11. This is very, very important. Numbers, chapter 11, and verse number 16 and 17. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me 70 men, of the elders of Israel, and whom thou knowest to be elders. You know the elders, even though functionally they are not there. The elders of the people and officers over them. And bring them unto tabernacle of a congregation, that they may stand there with thee. Now God wants some people to stand with a man who has a vision. Moses represents God's dealing at that point of time towards Israel. But God says, Moses, you're not going to be alone. I'm going to bring some elders who will stand with thee. I have a sense in my heart. Some of you are seated here. You might think your life is in isolation. But in the days to come, you will stand with the purposes of God, with the vision of God, with the anointing of God, with the call of God, with everything that God has for this nation and for nations overseas. You are going to stand with God. Oh, come on. Can I get somebody who knows what I'm saying? You're no more going to be wobbly. You're not more going to be squandering your position. You are going to stand there and stand strong with the things of God. And this morning, God wants to send an anointing on those people who want to stand with the call of God. How many of you really believe with all of your heart? Unless God makes you to stand, you cannot stand on your own. We will fail, we will fall, we will falter. Sometimes we don't even know what we are doing. Sometimes we are so excited, but the next day we become absolutely, absolutely, you know, you know, uh, uh, extracted, you know, uh, discouraged, demoralized. But let me tell you, God says, when God is going to send his anointing, you no more are going to go as a person that is going to waver. You're going to stand with the purposes of God. If you believe that, can I get an agreement in the house of the Lord? You are being chosen to stand with God. Hey, Hallelujah. So God says, I'm going to make you stand. And listen carefully, people of God. And then God says, verse number 17. This is powerful. And I will come down and talk with thee there. And I will take of the spirit which is upon thee. And I will put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee. That thou bear it not my, thyself alone. God said, I will bring the 70 elders and I'm going to take your spirit, a portion of your spirit, Moses, and put it upon them. That means they're also going to be spirit-filled. Let me tell you, nobody can stand with the things of God unless they're empowered by the Holy Ghost. 
Can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? Nobody can do the things of God without the power of the Holy Ghost. And list this afternoon, how many of you are longing to have an empowering by the Holy Ghost upon your life? Yes. Hey, God said they, they need the power. There, you, there's no point in getting angry and restless and, and, and finding them to be people who are not, you know, the way that you want them to be. But let me tell you, the moment I put my spirit upon them, they will be different. Whew. And look what happened. And verse number 24. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. 25. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke unto them and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested, I like that word. The spirit is not coming just to make you emotional. It's coming to rest upon you. When the spirit rested upon the elders. Ha ha. They prophesied. Let me tell you, they were able to do something that they have never done before. This is what the Holy Ghost will do. When it comes upon you, things that you could never even imagine for your life, you will be able to do, not because of your strength, but because of the power of the Holy Spirit upon your life. Can I get a witness somewhere here? Those of you know, when the Spirit of God comes, you will be able to do... Come on, it's no more you. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. You cannot prophesy on your own. You cannot heal on your own. You cannot be a pastor on your own. You cannot be an evangelist on your own. But when the Spirit of God comes upon you, let me tell you what was impossible for you. He will make it possible through your life. And this afternoon I believe there's going to be an empowerment by the Holy Ghost and you are going to come out with an anointing upon your life. If you believe that, put your hands together. Give the Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. Your life will Will never be the same again. And the Bible says, go ahead, the next verse. But there remained two of them in the camp. The name was, one was Eldad and the name of the other one Medad. And the spirit rested upon them and there were of them that were written, but when not, went not into a tabernacle. This anointing was not just anointing that is confined within a room. Anybody that was chosen who did not even come to a tabernacle, the anointing went after them. Amen. This morning I heard the Lord speak to me. Tell my people they're entering into a season where the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to go seek. It's going to go after you. That means while you're driving, the anointing might come upon you. While you're sitting in your office, the anointing might come upon you. Because you're entering into a season of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord. You will not just experience this anointing inside the house of the Lord, but also wherever you are. Because you're chosen. In the next few days, I'm going to declare this. Some of you seated here will not be here in the church on a Sunday. But you will be in some place in Philippines. Ministering to people that you have never seen before. Some of you will be in Sri Lanka. I will be in Gujarat. But let me tell you, the anointing will come after you. Wherever you are. If you believe that, can you shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord. This anointing will seek. This anointing will seek after you because God has chosen you. Amen. Let me make this very clear. I want to bring, bring, bring two or three important truths and then we'll pray. Number one, you know, what happened? Why, where did we go wrong in the West? I'll tell you something. We gave a lot of emphasis for training and for program and how we can make some people able by knowledge. I'm not against training. I'm not against Bible colleges. I'm not against going to a theological seminary. I'm not against it. I support. I love when people are able to spend time 
in the word of God or learning in a theology. But I felt I saw hundreds of them coming out of theology, losing the power of God. It became a strange sight. People who had fire that goes into the theology comes out as if the fire has gone from them. They become people with knowledge. They become theologians and with no power. But let me tell you, I sense in my heart, God is about to reverse it. Because with knowledge, you cannot save. With knowledge, you cannot heal. With knowledge, you cannot cast a demon. With knowledge, no demons will bow before you. But let me tell you, demons will bow at the mention of the name of Jesus Christ. When it's preached under the power of the Holy Ghost. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah. It's the power of the Holy Spirit of God. There's no other way. There must be the power. Let me make this very clear. You know, growing up in India, there's a, there's a small church like what we have today, 300, 350 people at the most at that time. And I remember during one of our fasting prayer, God's anointing came upon the church. And one after the other started to stand up to preach. People have never faced a crowd. People have never even prayed in our church. People who were very timid, even in showing their face to somebody. These people suddenly stood up. And when they preached, it was like fire coming out of their mouth. They were preaching with prophetic anointing. It was as if the things that were hidden were coming out to the open. People started to scream and say, that man is talking about my life. You know, let me tell you, when those things happen, we have a way of despising. You know what? That will not stay for long. It is just superficial. Let me make this very clear. Our church, you know, was not against theology. Because one of our major associate pastor was a dean of one of the top Bible colleges at that point of time. We had Bible college professors on the platform. But I want to make it very clear. The small children that got up, the young people that had no training that came under the power of God, are the ones today touching tens of thousands under the power of a living God. Hallelujah. There is no substitute for the Holy Spirit of God. I want to challenge the West. I want to declare this from the bottom of my heart. There is no substitute for the anointing and for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, when I go back to India, these little ones that got up, that was once ridiculed by the, the theologians on the platform, are the ones who have got greater vision and they're going from strength to strength. But some of this, on the ones on the platform, we don't even know where they are. But some of these young people, little ones, the obscure people, when the power of God came upon them, they started to touch thousands and tens of thousands. I sense in my heart today, when you go out from this place, you're not going on the basis of human wisdom. You're going on the power of the Holy Spirit. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. If you believe that, can you give a Lord a praise in the house of a Lord? We need the supernatural power of a living God. And the Lord told me today, how many of you know the great men in the, men in the Bible? Start with Jesus. What is the secret of his ministry? Acts 10, 38. How of God anointed. The word is anointed. Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good. Let me tell you, when you go about, today when you're leaving this place in the days to come, you're going about, but with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And he went about doing good. Even to do good, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. He went about doing good and healing that were oppressed by the devil. For the Lord was with him. What we need is the power of the Holy Spirit. I looked at Paul, the great Paul, the missionary who spanned the known world at his time. A man who took the gospel to the ends of the earth, if you could call it that. You know, the man 
who speaks about himself in Acts chapter, Romans chapter 15. Romans 15 and verse number 19. Look what the secret of his ministry. Romans 15 and 19. Through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God so that from Jerusalem and round about Lyricum I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Let me tell you, wherever you preach the gospel, there must be signs. There must be wonders and signs to follow the gospel. Let me tell you, the Bible is not an antique book. Jesus Christ is not a myth. Let me make this very clear. The word of God is the same as it was written in the days it was written. And let me tell you, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord. His power is still the same. There should be signs that must follow. There must be wonders that must follow. And I pray and I believe it with all of my heart. In the days to come when people come back from Philippines, when they come back from Sri Lanka, when they come back from different places, they are going to say, we saw lives transformed. We saw demons cast out. We saw the sick heal by the power of a living God. Let me make this very clear. These are the days of the Holy Ghost. We need to honor him. For Jesus, it was absolutely necessary that the Holy Spirit came upon him. And he was anointed by the Holy Ghost. And let me make this very clear, people of God. Anytime anointing comes, what is deficit in you will be filled. If anybody believes in the anointing of the Holy Ghost, can I hear a voice of thunder coming as conviction in the hearts? Hallelujah. Anything that is deficit, everything that is deficit in you will be supplied by the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, the 70 elders need a prophetic anointing and God is about to give it to them. If it is prophecy that you need, if it is boldness that you need, this anointing is sufficient. Oh, get ready. The Lord told me today to tell you. I heard that specifically and then I'm going to pray enough. Two words. Number one, whatever is a deficit in you, the anointing of the Lord will fill you. Brothers and sisters, you know Smith Wigglesworth, a man who was a plumber, a man who could not do any kind of preaching. He only was good because he was not educated in doing manual work. His wife was a preacher. And you remember there was a time that his wife kept on preaching as a conference happened. This man did not even know how to put sentences together. He didn't know how to preach. But he went to the Lord. He went to his room. And one night he had an encounter from the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit fell upon him. His whole body experienced the power of the Holy Spirit. And that next day, I believe, he got up on the platform to preach. Smith Wigglesworth. You know what his wife said? That is not my Smith. That's a different Smith. Because my Smith cannot speak like that. What was deficit was supplied. And I tell you, Today when I see some of you, it's going to be said, it's not the old Linda. It's not the old Paul Rock. It's not the old this sister. There is something different about her. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. If you believe that, shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord. We believe in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I've heard, had, I remember, you know, I have been a translator as well. And I remember one day I translated for, I was a good translator by the way. But one day I struggled because the man that I was translating for was so fast. You know, I'm normally a fast preacher, but I couldn't keep pace with him. After a meeting, I said, excuse me, mister, you put me in trouble. He said, you are the only guy who have done so much at least. Others have failed miserably. I said, what's the secret? He said, you know what? You know, do you want to know what the secret? I had stammering tongue. I could not speak few words without stammering. I would stay in one word a few minutes, a few seconds. But one day, the Holy Ghost came upon me. 
He not only took my stammering away, he gave me a fast tongue. Come on, hallelujah. And let me tell you, some of you are going to have an experience. Those of you believe the Holy Ghost can supply what is lacking inside of you. Can you make a joyful sound? Come on in the house of the Lord. The Holy Ghost will supply what is lacking in your life. Come on, believe it. Believe it. Whatever you're lacking, your prayer life, your faith, your hope, your power, everything shall be supplied by the Holy Spirit of God. Have God anointed Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to pray right now. But Jesus said to his disciples, when you stand before kings and governors, you are just fishermen. He didn't say, find a good lawyer. Find the best. Somebody who can represent you. He didn't say that. He said, when you are standing before kings and governors and rulers, don't you worry. Because my Holy Spirit will take over your tongue. Come on, hallelujah. And will speak through you. And that's going to confound the rulers. Let me tell you today what is impossible through you on your own strength. He is going to be supplied by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Those of you who believe in the power of the Holy Ghost, can you receive it by saying an amen in the house of the Lord? It shall be supplied. It shall be supplied. Hey. Do you know this pastor that you see today was such a timid guy, the youngest in my family. If I ever met, were to meet my cousins, I used to go and hide behind something because I didn't want to face them. Some of them were taller than I. But let me tell you today when the Holy Ghost came at the age of 12, the next week I was running on the street. I wanted to cast out as many demons as I could. Come on, I had such, I want to go out in the night and the morning and I wanted to choke the devil out of families. Let me tell you, people of God, that is because of the power. Greater is he who is inside of me than he who is in this world. And I believe this Sunday, some of you are going to get an infilling of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Do you want that? Come on, do you believe that? Your life will never be the same again. Hey. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's a beautiful passage. I'll read that for you and then I'll pray. Acts chapter 4. Look at what it says. Acts chapter 4 and verse number 29. When the church came under persecution, this is a prayer that they prayed. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness. You know what it means? It means that they found themselves to be in a situation where they were running on deficit when it came to boldness. Some of you have got boldness deficiency, clarity deficiency, flow of thoughts deficiency. Come on, prayer deficiency. And they prayed. They said, grant unto thy servants that with all boldness that they may speak. Thy word. Let me tell you, if God gives you boldness, it's not to use against your wife or your husband. It's to speak the word. And look what happened next to us. I love this. By stretching forth thy hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Verse number 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. This manifestation of the Holy Ghost did not just shake the people, it shook the place. Amen. Come on, some of you have made the Holy Ghost so gentle and, you know, Holy Spirit is only there to bring that love, charity, <laughs> joy, peace. You have become so patient. But what candor needs to see is the other face of the Holy Ghost. He can shake he can shake. He can shake the powers of darkness. He can shake the foundations of evil. If you believe that, can I hear a voice in the house of the Lord? He can shake. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. How many of you want to see the Holy Ghost shake? 
The powers of darkness attacking your life, attacking your family, attacking your children. The Holy Ghost can shake. He shook that place and filled them with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke the word with what exactly what you lacked. What was the one thing that you had deficiency? He is going to supply. So I declare in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you are seated here with deficiencies in your life. In the next few days, in the next few weeks, it shall be said about you that that was filled with the Holy Ghost. God took over. God took over. If you believe that, can you make a sound of agreement in the house of the Lord? It shall be supplied. Receive it in the name of Jesus. It shall be supplied. Everything that you need will be supplied. Wisdom, judgment, direction, discernment. I still remember a woman in our church one day, a very respectable lady in our church, drags her husband to the pastor who had come to preach. And he said, Pastor, I believe there's a demon in my husband. And the husband is standing quiet. He said, you know, she's a spiritual lady of our church. She said, there's a demon in my husband, would you please? He's become very quiet and he's acting abnormal. The pastor just looked at her and said, lady, the Lord tells me the demon is not in him, it's in you. <laughs> Discernment. The moment he said that, boom, the power of God came upon the lady, she was was under the power of God and demons started to manifest. Let me tell you, when you go to Philippines, you cannot judge by what you see. You need the discernment, the eyes of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody receive it in the name of Jesus. How many of you believe we are going to see a move of the Holy Spirit in our church in the days to come? If you believe that. Come on, hallelujah. We are going to see a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost. But the Lord told me to tell you, and we are praying. He told me, tell my people, tell my people that it is not the spirit from Moses that I'm giving them today. Jesus called his disciples and he said, all power in heaven and on earth is given unto me. Moses could never say that, but the son of God could speak. So he could say those words. He said, all power in heaven and on earth is given unto me. That means he has got power over cancer. That means he has got power over deafness. That means he has got power over paralyzing spirits. He has got power over demonic witchcraft spirits. He has got power over the strongholds of a nation. He has got power over cities and of tribes and nations. He has got power over every situation. All authority and power in heaven and on earth is given unto me. Therefore, go! Come on, therefore go. Receive the power. This is not Moses' anointing. This is Jesus' anointing on your life. <laughs> oh, somebody receive it in the name of Jesus. It's the same. Let me tell you. When Moses gave that, when God used Moses to pour out the Spirit upon them, it was taken from Moses and given. But in with Jesus, it's not... Something that you get from Moses. The same spirit that was upon Jesus. Is now. The Bible says not a second hand spirit. Jesus had one spirit and I get another spirit. That's not the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. The same spirit by which he healed the sick. The same spirit by which he opened the blind eyes. The same spirit by which he said, Lazarus, come forth. The same spirit by which he raised the lame. He's now upon you. Come on, if you believe that, can you start praising God in the house of the Lord? You are filled with the Holy Ghost. Receive the ministry of the Holy Oh, come on. If demons bowed before Jesus, they would bow before you. If sickness fled before Jesus, they would flee before you. It's the same spirit. Oh, somebody said these are just teaching. But these are not just teachings. Let me tell disciples came back. The disciples who are so timid and just so normal. No training whatsoever from anything that is professional. 
They were with their master. Jesus commissioned them. And they came back saying, Jesus, we saw demons bath. It's not just you, Jesus. We saw. When we commanded, demons are leaving. The Lord tells me to tell you, the commander-in-chief of this army is now looking. The moment you say, Jesus, I am part of your army. I am a member of your army. And Jesus, I take your authority. I take your power. And I'm going to reveal to the world that Jesus Christ is still alive. The name of Jesus can heal the sick, can deliver the people. Do you want to be a champion for Jesus? If that's your desire, shout an amen in the house of the Lord. You are going to do what Jesus did by the power of God. I'm going to pray. They came back with a testimony. They rejoice. They said, Jesus, we saw demons. We saw the sick being healed. I'm going to challenge you this afternoon. Push the envelope. How many of you believe when the Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead is upon you, in the days to come when you pray, healings will happen? Oh, you didn't hear that. When you pray, demons will leave. When you pray, some of you receive this. One sister sent me a dream today. See, she said, Pastor, I saw a leg growing when the, when, when the power of God came down. When you pray, legs are going to grow. When you pray, blind eyes are going to be opened. If you really believe that through the Holy Spirit, it is possible. It can be done. If you really believe that, can you make yourself known in the house of the Lord this afternoon? Can you make yourself? It's not by might. It's not by power. But by the spirit of a living God. You are called to be anointed by the Lord. And through you, God is about to manifest His power. Those of you standing, remain standing. The Lord told me to tell you. Tell my people, I'm commissioning them. It's not Moses' power. It is my power. It is not Moses' spirit. It's my Holy Spirit. Coming upon my people. And when that happens, God said there's going to be testimonies. I know why the Lord is holding me to his word, to that word, testimonies. The Lord is speaking that word again. In the days to come, in every life, that was led by the Holy Spirit, controlled by the power of God, there's going to be testimonies. Testimonies of signs and wonders. Testimonies of miracles. If you really believe in the word miracle, can you shout an amen in the house of the Lord? Testimonies of miracles. Things that nothing, things that cannot be done naturally. Things that cannot be done humanly. Things that cannot be even comprehended within the realm of human prospect. It's going to happen in the name of Jesus. Somebody receive this word. Your life is going to have some testimonies. Come on. Receive it right now. Can you lift up your voice in agreement? You're going to have testimonies of signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Meaning you cannot explain it. You cannot in any way rationalize it. You cannot even reason it. You are just going to say, I don't even know how this happened. But I know God is able. You're going to have testimonies. How many of you are willing to tell somebody today, through the Holy Spirit, I'm going to have testimonies? Come on. If you want to tell somebody, go ahead and tell somebody. Tell, tell somebody. Tell your family if the family members are seated beside you. I'm going to have testimonies. Get ready, get ready. Impossible things. There's going to be testimonies of signs and wonders. Are you ready to receive it right now? Because wherever the Holy Spirit moved, there were testimonies. Testimonies. Do you want to see the move of the Holy Ghost in this church? There's going to be testimonies. There's going to be testimonies. Receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Oh, wow. The Lord is moving in this place. 
And when this spirit comes upon you, people are traveling, receive it. Jesus looked at them. He said, don't go from Jerusalem until you're in, 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 you know, empowered by the Holy Spirit. You know, from on high. And then he said, you shall tread upon serpents. You shall trample scorpions. Let me tell you very clearly, when the Spirit of God comes upon you in power, powers of darkness that once upon a time intimidated you, is going to be subjected to you. Come on, hallelujah. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Every spirit, every spirit, every stronghold, every power of darkness will have to be subjected in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, put your hands together. Give the Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. It's a day of commissioning. Do not go into an unfamiliar territory without the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. You need the power. Of the Holy Spirit. You have received training. You have received skills. But that's not enough. You need to move. Led by the Holy Spirit. Jesus moved about. He went about. Anointed by the Holy Spirit. And with power. Wherever there's an anointing of the Holy Ghost. There will be power. Somebody say power. Power to tread upon serpents. Power to trample scorpions. You're going to receive the power. Today, the church is going out with the power of God in the name of Jesus. We're going to bless them right now. I want everybody, everybody in this place who believes in sending out missionaries, who believes in the, in the ministry of blessing nations, would you please step forward? Step forward and, and stretch your hand towards them right now. Would you please do that? Stretch your hand towards them. We're going to bless them right now. Pray that the Holy Spirit will take over your tongue. That's not by might nor by power but by the Spirit of God. Amen. Team, would you please lift up your hand? Because right now I'm seeing a vision where like oil coming upon you. These are oil drops falling on you. Father, I thank you for that vision. The burning oil of the Holy Ghost falling upon your people. Hallelujah. When they go, they'll go with power. Hallelujah. And I declare every strong man of that place is now under subjection to the power of the Holy Spirit. To the ministry of this precious people of God. Every demonic spirit will have to bath in the name of Jesus. Families upon families. Cities upon cities. Villages upon villages. Tribes upon tribes. Churches upon churches are going to be set free. 